the the official Babel Royale um, plastic uh, clipboard oh. in its right place when I'm done. It's rightful place, yeah. It's rightful place. I like it. All right, we are recording at full. There we go. Full volume, all is well. And the read, there is no read. Let's just start it. <laughs> the read is red. The read is later. That's right. All right, here we go. It starts in three, two, one. Cops say you got to a copper. You or me, they don't care. I found you. Why didn't I just turn you over to them without going through all this? Maria gave me your address. I could have given it to LaSalle. Why didn't I do that, copper? It's stuffy in here. My name's Lester. I like pro wrestling and beef jerky, and I'm looking for somebody to bang with no rubber while I go through a divorce. This is the morning stream with Scott Johnson and Brian Ibbett. Big old freaking dirt blanket. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to TMS for Monday, May 27th, 2019. It's Memorial Day. I'm Scott, and he's Brian. Hi, Brian. Hello. Happy Memorial Day to all of you. And remember to memorialize. Memorialize those who uh, uh, died, right? Gave That's the deal. lives in battle. Yep, exactly. <clears throat> These are, do not confuse this with Labor Day. Mm -mm. It's, it's, more, it's more the people who uh, confuse Labor Day with this, and they put out you know tweets saying, Hey, on this Labor Day, make sure to uh, remember all the fallen heroes that mm -hmm. we lost mm -hmm. in labor. Yeah, in labor. <laughs> all the labor deaths that we had. Well, I guess we do have labor deaths. Ladies, well, sure. ladies die all the time in labor, which is not a fun, fun to thing to think about. But hey, uh, right. uh, yeah, it's a, bit a holiday where you go to the gravestones and the whatnot there and, mm -hmm. and all that. We do, we do a very different tradition here in the Johnson household. Uh, as you recall, my dad, who owned arcades uh, most of my youth, uh, and to me memorialize him, we go to an arcade and we take the kids and we play for a couple hours on uh, the in the Nickelcade with all the old games that used to be around when he was here. So <sighs> that, that is the best. I, I swear that is like the best Memorial Day plan ever. It absolutely is, and the best part about it is my dad would love it because he hates yeah. people moping around being all sad and sure yeah exactly he doesn't that, want people that's exactly a, what i want putting a flower on your grave and all that he doesn't want he never wanted any of that stuff in fact he even said I, before he died he's like dude don't do when it i that. die yeah here's what i want everybody to do well at least my family yeah go out and buy a big ass lego set and uh put it together a big ass superhero lego set or a star wars giant death star or something like that and uh put it together in my honor i like that that's a good one yeah do fun stuff in people's memory yeah so that's yeah. what we're doing and my mom doesn't i don't think my mom likes it i think she wishes we were all going to the gravesite. Mm -hmm. so i don't mm -hmm. know what to tell her like we, we she knows that we do this but i think it bugged her just slightly but the games always bugged her she was never really into the whole video game thing and so sure. when my dad had that business she always thought oh even like, when he had the arcade he, she wasn't into yeah it. she sort of was the whole time was just sort of like oh what's this weird fly by night trendy thing this will never last and it kind of she was kind of right in some ways <laughs> Because the arcade business crashed in 85, but uh, he loved it, and uh, this is way better than moping around. So we're not going to mope around. We're For going sure. to the arcade. Good. So if anybody's out there in Midvale today, uh, and you happen to be by the Nickelcade near the uh, Fashion Place Mall, we'll be there. For at least a couple <laughs> hours today, if you want to say hi, there will be a sighting by the somewhere between the Sinistar and Gorf machines. Totally, absolutely. And if you're confused where that is, just listen for the Sinistar. I anger. I anger. Yeah. Run. <laughs> the most pissed off arcade machine in the history of the media. Yeah, it really is. Yes. So mad at everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was also it was also kind of the era of like, hey, we can sort of make it sound like there's um, voices coming out of these old machines. <laughs> right, exactly. So they went to town on that with that game. Yeah. If you guys don't know what Sinistar is, look it up. Go watch like some uh, YouTube video. Or a, I'm sure there's a YouTube video. Oh, that, guaranteed, yeah. guaranteed. Anyway, so that's going on. Uh, I got a funny story to tell you about McDonald's. Do you want to hear my McDonald's story? Sure. Yeah. Brand new one. Usually that's a good thing because food seems fresher and things are right. cleaner and you know. Right, the healthiest, the healthiest 
time to go to McDonald's is a brand new one. Yeah, brand new, open not long Everything's ago. Everything's low calorie. Exactly. It's a nice location. It's close to where we're going to the dog park. So we take the dogs to the park early in the morning, and they're all done. And we think, you know what, let's just cheat a little this week and go get ourselves a couple of, uh, what are they called? The, the ones that are like the pan, they're pancake McMuffins, basically. Um, oh, sh- McGriddles. McGriddles, yeah. yes. So we get two Mc- I never eat them, so I never remember the name. But we get two McGriddles. And we go to the window and we order it. And there's hardly anybody there. Okay, it's like kind of empty uh, this early in the morning. So it's not like a very busy one. Plus, it's like I said, it's new. It's in an area that's kind of new. So there's not a lot of traffic around there. It's just kind of chill. So we go yeah. to the window. We order our thing. Uh, he says, see you at the window. We're like, all right, sweet. We'll see you there. <laughs> we pull up to the window. Yeah. And he goes, here's your amount. Okay, pay that. And then he says, um, here are your orange juices. And he hands us those. He says, can you pull up to the to the um, the slot or the, the parking space that says um, drive-in number one? Okay. And we said, oh, yeah, that's fine. We haven't been to this one very often, so we haven't had to use that before. But you know, they have they have spaces. But reserved. you know the you know the drill, right? Yeah, sure. where exactly your your uh, Big Mac without special sauce might take an extra minute for the sure. for the in this case <laughs> it, wage employee to figure out. And <laughs> in this case, it's probably a good sign. It means the f- the food's going to be fresh. You know, they're just finishing yeah. it up or whatever. So we're like, yeah, sweet, that sounds great. So we pull around to where we're supposed to go, and there are three slots. Okay. None of them say. There are three slots. <laughs> there are three car slots. None of them say drive in number one the way it was described to us. Because he called what do it. They say? He called it drive up number one. And when we got there, there is one that says drive up number two. There's one that uh-huh. says drive up number three. And then uh-huh. the third one says something totally different that has nothing to do with drive up. And there's not a one on it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And so there is no <laughs> drive two up or three one. or four, but one. <laughs> <laughs> it's not there. It like doesn't exist. And yeah. so we're like, well, I guess we'll pull into two. Like, what else are we supposed to do? Is empty. And there's no other. Yeah. There's nothing called one. It doesn't exist. So we pull into two. And we're thinking, well, this is weird. And it's taking forever. We're like, what? There's yeah. no other cars. Like, where are they? What are they doing? Right. Then, right. out of nowhere, on my left side, Kim's driving. I'm on the passenger side. My window's down because it's a beautiful morning. And yeah. out from the side of the McDonald's runs this very short little Hispanic lady. Just a little tiny lady. And she comes running out with, like, a bunch of bags. Like, food bags. And runs up to the window. Yeah. And she goes, okay, okay. You have <laughs> you have, thir- you have 30 egg and make muffins. And I said, I have what? She goes, you have the 30 bag of McMuffins? I said, no, I have 30 of nothing. Those aren't mine. I said, that's not not what we ordered. She goes, oh, okay, okay, hold on. And she runs the other way with these bags of food, right? Like 30, literally, she's got 30 egg McMuffins, I guess, in those bags. Right, right. Runs back in the building, comes out, and gives us our regular order. But there's nobody in the drive up. There's nobody in the other slot. There's nobody anywhere that has ordered 30 McMuffins. It's it's almost like they've been waiting for somebody to finally go into, into spot number two. The, for days, somebody had placed an order and they said, oh, yeah, okay, pull into spot number two and we'll have your 30 egg McMuffins. And they've just been looking at this pile of bags in the corner and with a big sign on that says, deliver to spot number two. And there's never been a car in there until now. Yeah. And we're like... <laughs> Maybe that is what happened. I don't know. But I, we were just left kind of dumbfounded because who orders 30 Ma- uh, McMuffins unless you got like 30 soccer kids or something like that? Right, exactly. Yeah, you're taking them to a uh, taking them to a game or a yeah. party or something like that. And she never stopped smiling, so I'll give her credit. She was pretty stoked. <laughs> She's 30 at McMuffins? You ordered them? Oh my no, gosh. I didn't know. Oh, no. Okay, hold on. Like, she was very, just okay, running around, big smile on her face the whole time. She's probably like, She's not that short. She's probably like 5'1 or something. But she's a good foot and, and a half shorter than me. But yeah. And I'd ask you if you let the person know who brought you the correct order that there's no spot number one. But you and I both know there's nothing that would, you know, you could let them know till you're blue in the face that there's no spot one. And they'd forget to do anything about it from the from the path, from the walk from your car back to the door of the McDonald's. Yeah. And, so, I, and so I did. And actually, for that sort of reason, I didn't do it. I said, yeah. I just was like, we're pa-. like, what happened kind of is the 30 egg McMuffins blinded me to the past. 
which in the past was. <laughs> right like, here. I should bring up the fact that there's no slot one, and I should tell them so they can let that guy know he's telling people to go nowhere. Right. Also, why don't you right. have them numbered? Why isn't it one and two, not two and three? Sure. It's weird. I mean, they had to have somebody at one point spray paint or 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 paint the uh the lines in the in the lot and say okay well yeah we're gonna need a spot one a spot two and a spot three right and it's 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 the it's the great googly moogly uh (laughs) chefs kansas city chefs guy (laughs) yeah yeah he screwed that up screwed it up big time but uh but Uh, when she said 30 egg mcmuffins i was just like that's it i don't even know what world what planet am i on like what what episode of black mirror is this because i missed it the first time like i'm sure it was somebody who called in an order and said, "Yeah, we'll be in to pick it up at eight thirty or you know whatever." And they just hadn't gotten there yet. But um, man, I there was there's there's a part of me that'd be like, "Should I just take the egg McMuffins and run?" Or <laughs> I know part of me as this close, eat, this close. Yeah, but I'd eat one of them, yeah. and then I'd feel guilty about having twenty nine sitting around. Like, oh yeah, maybe this wasn't a good idea. Yeah. Oh, that's a good point, actually. And I wouldn't have had to pay for because I already paid at the window for my right. correct order. So really. Kim, Kim and I could have eaten two of those and then driven around the neighborhood like the great saviors of the neighborhood going, Egg McMuffins! <laughs> come pitching it at guys out there mowing their lawn. Egg McMuffin for yep. you! Yep. What song would play? What song would play? Help me here with my movie. What song would I play uh, while I do this? Oh, jeez. Like, what's a good theme for a guy driving around a, uh, a, a there, neighborhood in an 80s movie throwing Egg McMuffins at friends? Is there and, a right, like, is there an answer you're looking for, uh, no, for this? T- like, there's a I'll scene t- that I should be remembering? Okay. No, no, I'll take anything. I'm just looking for a good theme. I would think the, the Paperboy theme from the old video game. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, let's, I'm going to find it now. <laughs> okay, that's pretty good. Paper boy yeah. gameplay. All right, let's let's take a look here. Okay, right, here we go. See how close I was. All right, I just, it's been so long I don't remember. All right, there's a player one. Okay, okay, we're choosing. Can you hear that? Yep. It's only coming out of my right ear, but you should hear it. Is he playing yet, or is he? Do, is this just set up do, stuff? Do, 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 do. No, he's playing. Do, 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 do. He just threw one into the yard. Oh, he just knocked a. Yeah, that, maybe we. <laughs> that was such a dumb, such a dumb idea, but I love it. You put it into the the uh, the back seat of any cars with their windows open on a hot day at a uh, Walmart. Yeah, exactly. That's what you do. That's a great idea. You you put them, you shove them into the window of anybody who's left a crack <laughs> open in their window for their Rottweiler. And you just shove the egg McMuffin in there for the dog to just gobble down. And <laughs> all I hear in my head is funny when I think of this scenario. All I hear in my head is uh, "Don't you forget about me" by uh, <laughs> Simple Minds. Simple Minds. So sure, I've been ruined by that. And you had one job, Scott. You had to remember Simple Minds. Yeah, you couldn't do that. I couldn't do it. You know what I was going to say? Uh, who are the guys that go shout, shout, let it all out? Now I can't think oh, of their tears name. Tears for fears. Yeah, I was yeah. thinking tears for fears for some reason. Except I couldn't think of yeah, their you, name either. So you don't, you don't have to. Don't forget about Tears for Fears. Although I love Tears for Fears, so don't forget about Tears for Fears. All, both of those bands are great. Uh, yeah. Although the first one really only had one song that mattered. Anyway. Well, yeah. I mean, <sighs> all the things she said by Simple Minds is such a great song, and uh, yeah. um, it wasn't a big hit though, you know. Uh, Jungle Land. Yeah, Simple Minds, man. They, they just didn't. They, they basically had that massive hit for the breakfast club that yeah. massive song don't you forget about me yeah. and then in the uk lots of great hits with uh with them by the way jim kerr mm. who's the lead singer of that band he looks like uh he looks like yakov smirnoff um he was married to um i think he was married to chrissy hind for a while from the pretenders oh let's see really nice at work least, yeah at least they were a couple oh yeah maybe not jim married kerr. She was married to Ray Davies from the Kinks, and I think she was partners with Jim Kerr. Maybe they had a kid together, but didn't marry. Oh yeah, look at him! Oh, does he, does he look, look like, like uh, Yakov He looks up. like a '80s movie Russian guy. Yeah, totally does. Listen, I give you all the <laughs> cocaine you need. You just leave town. You have to leave town. Don't, like he, yeah, he looks don't great. Don't you forget about me? <laughs> <laughs> don't you? Don't you forget about me? <laughs> That's right. That's awesome. All right. Uh, 
Sorry, everyone. Hey, speaking of arcades and stuff, yeah. how'd, the, how'd that pinball place go? You mentioned it, I think, on the oh. show, but we didn't, we haven't heard yet. So. I did. I, and I uh, threw a few photos up on Twitter. Dude, this this was amazing. So it was uh, down at the Denver Tech Center Marriott, mm. and um, it was so packed in there that you had to basically park across the street and walk walk over to the thing. But it was a, a big old ballroom filled with, I'd say, I'd say 75% pinball machines 25 percent video games and there's a lot of companies basically the whole center of the ballroom were rows and rows and rows of pinball machines about um five rows back to back pinball machines yeah. and all set on free play you just walk up to any available machine start playing or if there's a specific machine you want to play you wait and uh, play it as soon as it frees up. They had brand new machines. There was a Willy Wonka machine that had a line ten people deep. That is like, oh, that'd be cool to play, but you know, I don't want to sit around and wait for, for ten guys to play it. Um, there was a uh, a brand new Wizard of Oz machine that we just had to wait for uh, a pair of guys to finish up, and then Team and I played that, and that was a blast. There's like a a crystal ball with a video screen behind it over yeah. on the bottom left side. Yeah and stuff would happen in there like you're the wicked witch and you're looking through her crystal ball to see what you know what the next bonus multiplier is and that one was great there's a guardians of the galaxy uh galaxy machine that was great do they have the two uh, the, or they have the like the old tng the next generation star trek one i love that ton. one yeah they had two or three uh two or three doctor who machines and basically this is a way for collectors in the area to bring machines that they want to sell or that they just want to uh, bring and get some play if you bring a machine you get you know a uh, free admission to this thing which is normally a hundred something dollars for three days yeah i can't imagine going there for more than one day tina and i were tina and i were just fine after being in there for two hours three hours just because oh, of the yeah. noise and the the crowds and you'd have to like be that. a complete pinball obsessive to go for multiple days i would think I think so. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Uh, and and you know, we met up with some obsessives who are really really cool. Uh, a couple uh, named Rusty and Shelley. They are from uh, North Texas, and every year they have their own uh, Texas Pinball Expo in Dallas. Oh, cool. And uh, um, I'm going to just bring this up to you right now. They mm. are huge fans of the show. They are the nicest people you'd ever meet. And they want to uh, bring us out there for next year's, for the 2020 um, Pinball Expo down there in Dallas. So we'll talk offline about uh, oh yeah, when is that? what they want to do. Do you know when that It'd is? It'll be the end of March. Uh, March 27th, 28th, 29th, I think. That might work. I'm in Mississippi for like a whole week and a half during the summer, but in the in the uh, early spring, in the winter. spring, yeah. Yeah. Let's talk, because uh, okay. they... they they sweetened the deal very, very, uh, very, very well, and we could easily do like a, a Texas meetup and have people. Uh, oh hell yeah! Who, who you know down in that area wanna? Can wanna we bring our as we phase? Can we bring them with us? Do you know? Bring yeah. our what? 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 Our as we phase? Our wives? Oh, <laughs> I'm trying to figure out as we phase. You yeah, don't remember yeah, that? No, the uh, whole they... it was an old SNL thing where it was like uh, my as we phase or something. It was like an old Nick Cage thing. Do you not remember that? I don't remember that one bit. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. Not one bit. Okay. I don't Somebody will find a link to that. Yeah. But uh, yeah, yeah, our wives are invited. They they had a great time. But they were actually giving us all the dirt on, um, on pinball. Man, there is a lot of drama in the pinball world, in the video game and pinball designing world. And I can't get into any of it on the show because it's kind of. Uh, I just promised I wouldn't say anything, but I'll just tell you, there's a lot of drama. Um, we also met the guy who uh designed the old uh black knight oh, pinball machine for williams maybe the greatest was, game of uh ever of pinball that's what i told him because that game i dumped so many quarters into that it was so oh, uh man it was so monumental at the time being the first game that had the multiple level like mm. you had a ramp to go up and and you had flippers on the upper level to try and knock out the targets and stuff um amazing game Dude, i loved black knight and we played black knight and and just brought back all those feelings we played firepower which was another another pinball machine that that i loved as a kid um and then lots of new stuff i mean it was it was a blast we did a lot of uh a lot of of pinball playing and it seemed like you maybe didn't get to go into the go right to the machine that you wanted to play but there were several machines around it's like oh you know what i've never played this one let's go play it and I'm like okay yeah Oh, played man. pretty cool Spider-Man game. 
played the Johnny Mnemonic. <laughs> oh, I was going to ask you about the Johnny Mnemonic. So did you actually play it or just notice it? I actually it? played it, yeah. Okay. And uh, I was really hoping there'd be like, hold sinners and stuff <laughs> like that in there. It is very, it is your, it is just your basic run of the mill ramps and targets and spinners. There's nothing really in there that made me no. like, oh, okay, yeah, I remember this from the movie. And oh, that movie, uh, that movie is really bad. It's, yeah. it's Brian's aversion to it is is a fair one it's not good <laughs> but it is funny as you go down the aisles how many movie uh movie based pinball machines you see that are things we've watched on film sack i mean mm-hmm. johnny mnemonic and water world and um tell me about this hot wing or cold wings what yes. the hell is this <laughs> it's just this top basically it is the top gun uh movie where they've changed just enough to not get sued so and it's basically it's yeah. not so it's Gottlieb is the maker of this thing i'd never heard of it but they're a big enough maker that they've made plenty of uh they've made plenty of pinball machines and video games and you would think they would be able to get the damn uh license but no they made yeah. they made a thing look like it's a top gun game like what <laughs> right the, crap? the logo yeah it's so funny to me yeah, people and people on Twitter were hilarious with their like ideas for what like music plays in the game. It's freeway to the scary place. <laughs> <laughs> Gonna take you right into it's amazing. Cold it's wings? Really what does that even mean, cold wings? Was it cold gold gold oh, wings? Oh gold G. wings. I keep thinking it's yeah. a C. Alright, gold wings. Yeah. Still, gold wings. Wow. I guess you get your gold wings when you uh you know. So I my head says there was a Gold Wings video game also, and there's also a slot machine. I knew that, but let's see. You mean a Top Gun? No, you know it was Gold actually Wings. called Gold Wings. No, it's huh. not. I was wrong. It's just the pinball machine. So they have a yeah. pinball machine I mean, and they have a Vegas machine or a, a sorry a um, slot machine, and that's it. Oh really? You know, okay, didn't for, know that. For Gold the, uh, Wings. <laughs> Gold Wings. I mean, it's like it's like they said. Uh, draw a line between Top Gun and Iron Eagle. Come up with name, and we'll make game based on property. It's, it's no problem. Uncle Godlieb, ready to make game for you. <laughs> exactly. That's a great thing. Uh, so, if did you? Okay. So, when you did you walk away going, ah, this time, this trip, it was, it was this other one that's the best, or did Black Knight remain your, uh, your king of the crop? It's it's kind of, you know, as much as the new stuff. Um, the new stuff is cool, and I really like the the goofy uh, stuff that they had. There was a great uh, Be- uh, Beatles pinball machine that was based on an old 1960 Beatles machine, and they had they'd added a few new things to it, like a magnet up at the top. So if you if you did your plunger shot just right, just at the right uh, level of uh, of spring, mm-hmm. that ball would go, and it wouldn't skate past the magnet it would like stick right to the magnet and then it would drop into a new area love that um really really cool and it would play beatles music although it was so loud in there we couldn't uh really hear much any of these machines i'd love to just put in my basement oh um, yeah and they're probably if, all if in great shape say, right like really good condition everything in there totally immaculate condition and that's probably it would probably be something like that as much as i love black knight if i were to get a machine in the basement i'd want it to be one of these newer ones that has a little bit more variety and depth to the things you do mm. um the spider-man machine actually no i take that back the guardians of the galaxy machine i think was my favorite because you'd actually choose a mission before your first ball and you'd have to complete that mission. So mm. I did uh, sibling rivalry, which was uh, Gamora and Nebula mm. uh, targets and, and lock ball. And then there's like a group multi ball or you could do Quill's quest and you have to, you know, do all the things that, that that's part of. I'd feel like that was that's the kind of machine I'd want in the basement because it, it would feel like at least I'd get a variety of what I do every time I play it. Sure. Lilu multi ball. Right. Oh, see, now that's the thing. I thought a fifth element machine would be brilliant. Oh, yeah. Why wouldn't that be a thing? Multi-pass. That should be a thing. Yeah. Is that a thing? 100%. No, it's not a thing. And we were talking oh. about, I was talking about that with Rusty and uh, Shelly and saying, why isn't there, because we had just watched it. And, and that day we had just talked about it for Film Sack. And so many things would be perfect, right? You go, you'd hit several targets, and that would open up the Flossed in Paradise for you. And you'd go up to maybe a second platform level would be Flossed in Paradise. 
and you'd have to hit all the targets of the Mongolorians or whatever they were called. Yep. And, if you um, tap, if you tapped uh, the little visage of uh, of what's his name of uh, Ruby, Ruby Rod, Rod, you could have him go. Let's see, I have it right here. It's you, the super green bonus. You could have him go. <laughs> you could have him do this. Ah! Right when he gets hit, right in the head. <laughs> exactly. That'd be amazing. Right. I mean, there's so many. Like I, I could sit down and design this game, and it would be, it would be brilliant. I think. Dude, and it would be colorful, yeah. and it would be... It'd be colorful. You'd have four stone, like the little models of the four stones on mm -hmm. different places on the, the game board, and you'd have to unlock each one yep. by, you know, you hit this one, and it sounds like water is hitting that target, and yeah. then this one sounds like air is blowing at this target. Yeah, and the stones could actually rise up and, like, yes! glow, and then they could now block, you know, now there's a strategy to getting around them because you're trying to get the fifth one in the middle, getting her to scream. Oh, there's so much you could right. do. Yeah, I'm totally. <laughs> Why? Why isn't that? A, that's a, actually I'm a little Grammar shocked. J.K. Grammer found a uh, Fifth Element video game, but that's you know that's not the the same thing. I remember this game. Yeah, I, I remember too. it being terrible. <laughs> yes. 1998. Uh, let's see, PlayStation and uh, computer PCs, and it was bad. It was very, very, very bad. In fact. Yeah. So bad, it's worth looking at later if you want to go to YouTube and look that up. In fact, you know what? Today I might use that for... Don't tell Brian. I'm going to use it for my Guess My Game segment on... Oh, okay, Boucher. cool. Yeah, he's listening, so he's actually in the chat room. So well, shit! Up. What have I done? All right. Uh, well, uh, that sounds anyway, great. I'm jealous of you, and uh, that sounds like a lot of fun. Also, tell us about your head real quick. What's going on with your head? I'll do this really quick. So last night went to a birthday party uh, for a friend named Amy, and it was held by her sister who has this absolutely freaking gorgeous house overlooks a little grassy area with a pond and there are several outdoor decks with lights you know in in the the uh the pergola wood at the top mm -hmm. and um just absolutely gorgeous absolutely the, like the freaking Sounds architectural amazing. digest dream house yeah and uh, uh the upstairs this little loft area has a grand piano and then a bar next to it and um, she was saying, you know, we, we got there early. Crazy Neighbor was doing all the food for her. So we got there early and said, look, anything you need, you let us know. I want you to enjoy this as much as your sister does. And, you know, so just just be really, you know, tell us whatever you want. She's like, oh, my God, Brian, you know, could you and Tina go grab ice from the garage and, and just kind of stock the bar upstairs and stock this over area and, this, you know, outside. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, uh, so we're doing all that, and I discovered this little this little closet area where I'm supposed to put the ice after I've stocked the bar because it's out of the way. But in there is also some other bottles of alcohol that wouldn't fit on the the bar top because she wants people just to go up and make their own mixed drinks and stuff. I'm like, oh, there's sapphire uh, gin, sure, I'll I'll make myself a gin and tonic while I'm right here. Right. So I go in there and get the gin. I come out and don't realize that this this room they've added on to their loft has a lower door frame oh. than, <laughs> than, uh, than the rest of the room. And I clock that thing so hard. It's like, you know, that, that like shower of stars you see in your eye. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's bad. There'd be, there would be uh, birds in a circle, <laughs> uh, you know, around my head and stuff. If, if this were a cartoon. Sure. Um, now I can't see, there's not a mirror up there, so I can't see, what I've done, but I know that I can feel up there, and I know that skin has been removed from the top of my head. Yeah, not necessarily drawing blood, best you can tell, or at least initially. Uh, I think there was a little bit of blood, yeah. Mm. But uh, mm. but anyway, so so Tina's up there with me, and I say, I just hit my head. Did you didn't see that? And she's like, No, what happened? I said, Oh, I just hit my head on that door frame, and I bend my head down, and her eyes get really big, and she's. Oh my God, are you okay? <laughs> Which is like the, the worst thing. It's like I can't see what I've done. She's looking at like, like you know, uh, she better start making arrangements for, <laughs> for, <laughs> for my funeral or something. Wow. But uh, yeah, so. So what, anyway, so what did you? So do we get to see it? Like bend down for the. I'm listeners. not gonna. I'm not gonna pull. You don't off, have to man. pull it off, but everyone, look at the size of that freaking band aid. Look at that thing. Yeah, it's and it hurts from here. To here, yep. Here to here. Yep. <laughs> you know what it reminds me of? We used to tease my dad about this because uh, he used to always do this. He'd always bang his head on something, and he was bald, and he mm -hmm. would always end up with this. We used to call it a mash on his head. I don't know why we called it that, but a we mash, called it a mash. Okay. And my buddy Andrew was always talking about. It. He'd come to the house, 
Like one time he came to the house to get me. Knock, knock, knock. Dad opens the door. Blood just pouring down his face. And he's like, oh, and he's, ah, don't worry about it. I just hit my head on the thing. Says, I'm going to go get Scott for you. Always bleeding from his head. He was always banging his head on something. <laughs> yeah. And there's something about being tall and bald that you just invite this. And tall people, you, we hit their head, you know, we hit our heads on everything all the time. Yeah. But I guess it's, uh, you know, it's uh, uh, you don't have the hair as a little bit of protector, but also you don't have the hair as kind of like a little, a little um, cover up, so people can't, uh, can't see it. Yeah, I, I, I feel for you because I've had this before. Um, but what I like is that your band aid is so high up there, no one's even going to notice it. <laughs> and it hurts like if I have the, if I have my, the strap from my headphones yeah. over it, and it hurts like a oh. inch. So I've actually got to have it back behind it. I'll bet a VR helmet would hurt right now. Put, oh, put a little pressure. Yeah, that middle would. strap would just be like pushing you down. Yeah. Well, all right. This has all anyway. been great. Uh, let's get Dunaway in and do some fun stuff on yeah. this Memorial Day. He's home today, not having to work, which is nice. Uh, I wish yeah. I was uh, doing the same. I got Today's busy for me. It's like everyone's got a vacation day but me. Other than me going to the arcade, it's going to be kind of bananas. Uh, huh. on my yeah, it's. I'm, I kind of purposely made it a little bit lighter day. Usually, I do work on Memorial Day. I'm going to do a little bit of work. I've got a lot of Anthrax to listen to for soundography. Oh, whose idea? I'm realizing was it? I, that was probably a Hammond uh, idea, wasn't it? It was a Hammond pick, and I'm realizing. I'm sorry. This may be a very unpopular uh, opinion, but I don't like any Anthrax before 1992. <laughs> Yeah, no, I think that's fair. I don't like much Metallica before a certain era either. Yeah, I yeah. get it. Like they had, they had their little dirty rough time, and then they got better. Yeah, so. exactly. I mean, there's there's some things. I'm sorry, 1990. So there's a couple things on Persistence of Time I like. Yeah, I'm liking a couple things on Sound of White Noise. I'm really having a hard time with this this week. I well, like finding stuff that I like, but eh, you know, hey, this is Hammond's way of trolling you, is my opinion. I'm totally is. So yeah. I'm gonna make him listen to. Uh, well, we already did Spice Girls. I'll figure out some way of torturing him later. Yeah, you can get him back. Speaking of torture, yeah. hey, it's Brian Dunaway. Good morning. Oh, hi. New setup. Who dis? Oh, hi. Ooh, you're quiet. You're a little quiet. Yeah. A little quiet? Yeah. How about now? But Is you, it more? Give us more. Less? Give us more. It's oh my God, less quiet. <laughs> less quiet. <laughs> yeah. That would be less quiet, Brian Holtz. Getting I got it. better, I got getting it. better. I got it. Chill out, chill out, chill out. I got it. I got this. Better. I got this. Getting better. I got it. I got it. I got better, it. Is it better? better? It's better getting better. better. I feel like getting me better all the time. Let me let me try this. What about that? Does that help any? That is much better. Oh, you sound great. Yeah. yeah. Well done. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Good job on huh. that. Yeah, you did it. You nailed it. Uh, hey, it's uh, it's Brian Dunaway. What's what's going on, man? What's life like where you're living? What's going on over there? Oh, hi. It's Memorial Day, so I'm remembering people by uh, not going to work. Oh, that's fantastic. Perfect. Well, guess what? Perfect. We got somebody calling in right now to do this as well. Hi, who's this? Hi, this is Rory Cop in this chat room. Well, hello. Rory, did you say? Roy Cop. Oh, uh, Roy Cop. I'm oh, the Roy husband Cop. of one of the podcast contestants. Gotcha. Oh, hi. Nice to have you here. Here's this. <laughs> Time for us to play a little game of Babel Royale with our good friend Brian Dunaway as uh, my nemesis. I fight him each Wednesday and yes. Monday. It's fantastic to time. To the death. Fight. To the death. Fight. Round one. Uh, so we're going to do that in a second. Brian's going to explain the rules <laughs> and, what, and what Roy Cop could win on this fine Memorial Day. Brian, take it away. That's right, Scott. I'm going to be giving Scott and Brian Dunaway a topic, and they're going to go back and forth with answers for that topic. If one of them gives a wrong answer, a repeated answer, or they take too long to come up with an answer, the win is going to go to the other player. Roy Cop, mm. your job, if you accept it, is to predict who's going to come out on top based on today's topic. Today, you are playing for the carryover prizes from last week. Terraria, Lara Croft and the Guardian of Light, and Orcs Must Die too from steam mm, plus well. scott is throwing in another dc book from uh uh from our listener that sent a bunch of stuff uh stuff in it is the long halloween the batman uh graphic Ooh. novel long halloween I which is a great his, one i, I want that awesome. i can't find his letter now but his name i will remember and say again at some point but yes the long halloween one of the 
great <laughs> Batman stories ever told, and uh, you'll have love you seen it. My long Halloween. Yes, I have. <laughs> Did not like your long Halloween was oh, gross. No, thank you. Yeah, just the tip. All right, what? All right, All right. so yes. here is your topic today. Uh, this one comes from Mike Crowley. This is a fun one. Uh, Toy Story 4 is coming out soon, and so it's always fun to look back at the origin of the story and the toys from Toy Story 1. Mm. Andy had 19 toys seen in the original Toy Story movie from 1995. Uh, you had your primary and your secondary toys, but, you know, I'll, I'll take any. Any of his 19, his, Andy's, 19 toys seen oh in the original, original Toy Story movie. Hey, the kid had a lot of toys. Yeah, this he is had a lot, lot of toys. Hey, no. hey, she knows it's a multi pass. <laughs> oh, oh. multi pass. Oh, this is the original one. The hill. <laughs> it really sticks with us for some reason. For some reason, really our does. we we uh, brought out the. Uh, no, I can't think of his name. Who's the guy? Andrew that, Dice Clay. Andrew Dice Clay on the weekend, and we yeah. can't get rid of him. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. All right. Uh, Let's go. So who do you, uh, you who do you think's gonna win and who's gonna start there, uh, Roy Cop? Um, I'm gonna go with Scott to win, and just to change it up, we'll go with Brian to start. All right. All right. Well, I'm gonna go with Buzz Lightyear, a Star Command. Oh, very good. To infinity and beyond. Yes, mm. of course. Buzz Lightyear is one of Andy's toys. All right. Toys. Uh. I'm going to go with uh, Woody. Sure. Woody. <laughs> also a safe bet. Let's get the let's get the two stars out of the way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Those are your gimmies. <laughs> All right. Can't forget about Mr. Taterhead, Mr. Potato Head. Mm. That's right. Uh, Don Rickles, I believe. Yeah, it was Don Rickles. Was correct. Yeah. And then I'll say Mrs. Potato Head, and she was. And uh, you lost. I win. Shut up. She was the lady from. Oh, wait. Does she not show up until two? Shit. Is this your is that your final? I guess it has to be your final answer, right? No, I don't I want think... it to be. I have another one. I knew it, I knew it, I knew it. That was my plan. No, plan. I, I haven't said an answer yet. Fast. I was just talking it through. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know why I even went there? I went there because I was wanted to tell everybody that it's Estelle from Seinfeld. It's freaking George's mom. <laughs> That's the only reason All I started. Right. How did I say it? You know what? Hold on. Let's go. Let's go to the tape. Let's go to the let's tape. Go to the tape. Because yeah. this will help determine. Hold on. Mom. <laughs> through. Okay. Shit. And you uh, lost. That's right. Uh, okay, Don Rickles, I believe. Yeah, it was Don Rickles. Was correct. Yeah. And then I'll say Mrs. Potato Head. Ah, yeah. oh, shit. Yeah. Yes. That's, yes. That's no. Right <laughs> We might get, played, I don't know, five or six right in, into this. I did play right, right into, into my hands, hands, Mr. Johnson. After a review of the tape, it appears that I have made a horrible error. Uh, Roy Cop, I'm an idiot. You should have won this today, uh, and I am horribly uh, embarrassed. All right, I want to at least mention a few that yeah, I know. Redeem, redeem I yourself. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah I would have it. said Rex the Re uh, Rex the dinosaur. Sure. Yeah, and who does yeah. that? Inconceivable. Uh, that that's is, uh, yeah. Uh, Wallace Shawn. Wallace Shawn, right? Uh, Slinky yep. the dog, played by uh, how's it going? Jim, Jim Varney. Jim Varney. Jim Varney. Yeah. You, know what I mean? uh, yeah. you got uh, uh, the uh, lady uh, Bo Peep. She's in this. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the, I was almost, I almost couldn't remember. I'm like, Bo Peep was in this one for sure, but I couldn't remember. I was just like, Ugh. yeah. Uh, let's see. Now I'm starting to run out. Who you I, get Cliff? Come on. Oh, Cliff Clavin yeah. played the pig, the yeah. penny, penny uh, yep. piggy bank. Yep. Piggy um, bank. Ham. Ham. Ham is his name. Ham. Yep. Right. Ham. And then hold on. Uh, who was that little muscle guy? Oh, I don't know, but uh, well, you can't... okay. The army men, front and the yeah, you the... can't forget Sarge. Yeah, Sarge. Sarge the army Lee, uh, the Remy, right? Those soldiers. Yeah. yeah. Gosh yeah. dang it! Look how many I would have had. I know. Here are the ones you could have said. Uh, Sarge. Uh, let's see. RC. Mm -hmm. RC. Oh, what's that? Yeah. RC. Was it? Was it? The... The... RC was he? Yeah, he he saved him from the truck. Do you do you know how many times I've seen the first one? L like many, a million. million times. Yeah. Like a million. Yeah, yeah, and I don't think C and say. I think you're thinking of Etch, the Etch a Sketch. Is that yeah? That's right. Because they he got the meeting together, and uh, it, Woody did. Wasn't there a right. speaking spell? There was some kind of speaking spell in this. Yeah, because he oh, got. Here it is. I'm sorry. Yes, uh, Mr. Spell, a toy with a built-in keyboard, yeah. speaks words that are typed in. Right. Yep. Yeah. They wasn't branded uh, though, because they, <laughs> they wanted to brand that right. thing. They just right. Rocky there. Gibraltar, uh, yeah. Lenny are the wind-up binoculars, the magic eight ball, Mr. Microphone, um, oh, Mr. Shark. Uh -huh. um, the Mr. robot. 
Was Wheezy there yet, or he didn't show up until two? That was that. Yeah, Wheezy's right. the no. guy that yeah. he's the he's the dude at Pixar who passed away. Sadly, he's awesome. Right. Yeah. Uh, snake troikas and a troll doll that appears oh, yeah. in the first two oh, films. Oh, the troll the, doll. Uh, yeah. The 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 catch was seeing if I, either one of you guys brought up the aliens from the Claw game. Oh, yeah. Ooh, that wasn't Andy hit. Did not own those toys. So. No. Andrew. Although they ended up being his toys in two because Ooh. in two yes. they hung around. Yep. Right. The Claw. Exactly. <laughs> Man, I feel so dumb. Honestly, that was my brain saying, "Oh, I also know an actor who played a character, Mrs. Potato Head." But I I get the I get the inclination to go with Scott for being the Toy Story expert because he does like Toy Story three and I do not. Oh, so that's you true. may think that I do not like mm. Toy Story, but I have such a passion for one and two. Yeah, that, uh, you're it's, also it's, insane about three. You're insane. Yeah. Well, I, I purchased yeah. I purchased about five hundred dollars worth of Toy Story toys when the first one came out, <laughs> yeah. and Andrew currently. My oldest child currently has them. We kept them all in the boxes. Mm -hmm. uh, can, the can I point out the irony too that right. um, buying, you know, and, and I'm sure 500 bucks is an exaggeration, but I'm sure it's not no, much of an exaggeration. It was not an exaggeration. These are licensed versions of toys that cost, you know, 40 bucks. 490, 499. Right, exactly. You could have had all the toys in Andy's room for about 40 bucks. <laughs> yeah, right. they weren't the licensed versions of the toys from Andy's we room. We had about. So. We had about four. We had about four different Buzz Light years. Uh, <laughs> even the very first one that came out with like wow. the yellow yellow band instead of the uh, later one, the oh. blue and white band. Yeah, right. Yeah. Well, I remember that. Oh, that's so funny. Mm. Those are uh, hard wasn't, to get. Wasn't Zorg the the villain in that one too? Two. Or I remember, remember. that was in two. Well, he, uh, he, there, there was there was there was, there was mentions of Zorg in the yeah, first yeah. one. But he, he was he was character. talking all about how he's he would have had escaped him. He didn't know why he was there. He needed to get out of Andy's room so he could go back to fighting Zorg. Like that was. A theme through Zerg. the whole thing? Okay, or Zerg, Zerg, rather, Zerg. 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 Because we just, again, you know, Fifth Element, Zorg is the villain there. So I kept thinking that Zorg was also the name of the villain in Toy Story. Right. But you get Zerg right. and Zorg. Yeah, Zerg, <laughs> and then, which throws me off because that's a StarCraft uh, race. So that's weird. Right. But yeah, well, then Zerg, he. Z U R G. Right. Wow. Oh, I'm, I think a great. Here's an idea for a cartoon if anyone wants it Zerg versus Zorg versus Zerg. Oh, I'm in. <laughs> I'm in. I like it all. Uh, all right. Well, uh, and they're all they're all giving each other mail that was incorrectly delivered to the wrong guy. Yeah, indeed. <laughs> I like that. And you could have Cliff Clavin in that one as well, just to, just because he's Cliff. Hey, check this out. This is for me. That's because I lost. Uh, hey, uh, that means that you can try again one day, and uh, perhaps then I won't be so stupid. Uh, but thanks for playing along. Oh my Not gosh. stupid. It was pretty oh, stupid. Hey, I no no. I I'd actually thought about it when I had said Mr. Potato Head, and I was like, was Miss Potato in the first one? I was like, no, because I remember being very excited in the second one when she showed up. Georgie. And, oh, she's so good. She's yeah. still with us, right? She's still around. She's still. So is Ben. Uh, so is Jerry Stiller. I'm pretty sure they're still with us. Those two. Right. Yes, I think so. I think Jerry Stiller. Last time I saw him was looking pretty rough, like all slowed down and kind of. Uh, maybe well. maybe dealing with some early business, but that dude's old. Nineteen twenty-seven, right? If you want to go down a rabbit hole, by the way, uh, look, go back and l learn everything about Mr. Potato Head and how it came to be and how it was originally a potato, and you just bought the attachments. You literally just bought little attachments that you yeah. stuck into a potato. Yeah, they were like DLC for your potato. Yeah, yeah, real you'd potatoes. Yeah, real potato. You'd have a potato, and then you go buy a pair of lips and you'd stick it in your potato, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so that was well before our time, but it's it's interesting history. Yeah, and it's uh, I mean, think of a toy today. Like, would they ever have a toy today where it's like, buy some of these plastic bits and stick it in your banana? Right. Like, it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> stick it in your banana, that'd be wrong. Yeah, I want to make a toy called "Stick It in Your Banana," yeah. and it'll just be <laughs> <Mr>. <laughs> Banana Head, right? <laughs> Uh, all right, hey, uh, that's gonna do it for. Hey, your are we time doing here. the boop show tonight? Yeah, I, I, if you are, it's are really you? Really funny you say that because. <laughs> I hope you are because I'm planning on it. Right. Are, are Me you? too. Okay. Well, Three, well, yeah, yeah. Okay, I'll, good, good. I'll good. be home from. Uh, we're going to that arcade. Should be home before then. Then we do the boop show. Then I have a barbecue at five, so it's perfect. We got it. We do. Well, we're doing if this. it's too tight, Scott, we can move it to another night. But oh, I think we can do it today. I think we're okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Right. Kim. Kim's got this all worked out today. We're doing. I'm doing. I'm. I want you. I'm doing a comic dorks right after this with Steven. and then. Oh, dude. We push Skim to tomorrow because Kim's busy with stuff today. For because she's. Well, how about we just do this, boop listeners? 
we're most likely going to do a show. If something happens, it's okay. Scott's yeah, very we'll busy. It's know. Memorial Day. Yeah, we'll let you know. It's Memorial Day. If 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 Scott doesn't do it, I will definitely be streaming tonight. Uh, don't do not feed the monkeys. I'll are, do that. Are you going to do ASMR and uh, uh, eating food on camera and stuff like that? You can do that. That's right. No, oh, okay. it's, it's actually the game well, called Do Not Eat the Monkey. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Well, Brian I, and Brian IRL. Yes, right. Nice, Brian IRL. <laughs> check it tonight. Um, but I think there is going to be one. I want there to be one because right. I've played some games I need to Me talk too. about. Yeah, there's some good stuff. All right, done away. Stay out of trouble. Uh, kiss our collective butts, and I can't find a way to eject you from this call. Why? Party, I go. Right. All right. Oh, look at Brian stretching. That looked good. I'm stretching, getting ready for getting ready for Act Two of the morning stream. Oh, act two. Oh, that's a good thing to do once in a while. I've been playing a lot of that uh, Beat Saber around the house, and it's I'm a, oh, I'm a little yeah. sore, honestly. Dang it! It's really good. You're gonna make me. You're gonna make me break down, Scott, it's and buy really one good. of those Oculus Quest. It's really good, right. man. The way I look at it, here's how I justified it. First yeah. of all, it's relatively cheap, but on, yeah. on the other hand, this was gonna be a year where I was gonna maybe have to be forced to look at a new notebook. But mm -hmm. I've decided no, not in 2019. <laughs> and so I was like, look at all the money I saved by not doing that. Now I can ah, get an Oculus. Yeah, that's how my brain works. So. Uh, did you go 64 128? I should ask. I did the 64 because um, I, my experience has always been that I never fill out that stuff anyway, so yeah. it didn't matter. Yeah, exactly. You can delete. You don't need to have 25 games at your fingertips. Once you're done playing a game or you bought a new game that's new, hot and shiny, you just get rid of the old ones. Yeah. Right Unless something comes out where it's like a, a killer app and it needs all 128, we're not mm -hmm. we're not there mm -hmm. yet. So nah. it's totally fine. And also. Um, <sighs> Uh, somebody had asked me online if Beat Saber, because the PC version of Beat Saber, when you when you play that with your you know your PC, mm -hmm. you can sideload all kinds of music. People are your own music. Yeah. yeah. Well, I don't know if it's your own music or if it's stuff people have to have, because I think you have to oh. programmatically do stuff to I the music. That was the thing that it would like it would find it would like automatically find the beat of your music and at least just try and fudge a, a thing. That I guess maybe, you need you maybe need more than just that. That may yeah. entirely be true. I'm not actually sure. However, I can't find out if I haven't been able to find out if you can sideload or not. So I'm working on that. If you can, great. Okay. We'll see what we can do. All right. All right. Uh, we have time for a couple of news stories. And it starts with it. This is your radio newscaster with another exclusive, sensational summary of world and local events. It's the news brought to you by. Brought to you by the Boop Show. You heard Scott and Brian talk about whether or not there'll be a Boop Show today, and you might just be as confused as I am as to whether there will be a Boop Show tonight. But stick around, keep an eye on Twitter, and you'll find out if and when they're recording. I think we will be. Good. It would have to, something really weird to have to happen, I think, for it not to happen. Uh, let's do uh, one or two of these stories today. We got some sure. good ones. Um, how about this one? Actually, this is just a nice little thing to know. If you had a bag of Twizzlers, do you have any Twizzlers handy? You got anything around no, there? Okay. No. If you did, apparently, uh -huh. you can use a Twizzler as a phone stylus. Really? Yeah. It doesn't matter what phone you have. It can be uh, iOS, Android, whatever. If it's a capacitive yeah. touchscreen, <clears throat> it can use a Twizzler as a phone stylus without any <laughs> special <laughs> needs. It just freaking works. Now, why, why, you, why you would, I don't know. Like I'm trying well, to think. Well, if you have gloves on, right, and you you know, it's cold out, you're enjoying a lovely Twizzler, and <laughs> all of a sudden you need to get uh, get something tapped out on your keyboard. Yeah. You don't want to take your glove off. You can just say, "I'll just use the Twizzler that I'm currently enjoying." Red vines? No. No, red vines don't work. They don't um, work. Okay. No, and I go. and I assume another that... reason another reason Twizzlers are better. <laughs> yeah, this is all true. So I think you have. <laughs> Chad Bagheera 74 says it's because it has human skin in it. That's not why. <laughs> that's not why. But uh, for some reason, that stuff is capacitive, which means, by the way, capacitive touch is because you have ele you have electrons running through your fingers. Yeah. And the screens respond to it. So when you wear gloves, the gloves, unless they're the kind that conduct that. That actually have the, right, have the little special pads on them. Right. So that otherwise would block your... Um, the electrical signals from your fingers to the screen somehow your freaking twizzlers got i don't know electrons whizzing around in it or something that's pretty so weird I'm feeling like this is like the perfect 
uh, our hero gets out of a sticky situation where his hands are tied behind his back, mm -hmm. and all he's got is a room with a, a packet of Twizzlers and his phone sitting on the on the table, and he can yeah <laughs> he can call for help now, by uh, yeah using like the Twizzlers uh, in his teeth. We need a new plot for a reboot of MacGyver. MacGyver, so, yeah. yeah. What does MacGyver do in 2019? Right. Well, he's gets he's, to gets to a phone with a yeah. nice big long. Uh, I better finish that sentence. He gets to his phone with his nice big long Twizzler. Oh, Brian just froze. <laughs> Did you freeze? No, you're there. I'm here now, but you froze on this look <laughs> like. <laughs> I'm putting us on central. It appears the it appears the Western oh. servers are farting out. F you, U.S. West. Now we're good. That's funny because every time it's frozen, it's frozen on an expression on your face like you're crazy. Because <laughs> I was talking about the MacGyver. I don't know how much of me talking about the MacGyver reboot you heard. But. Yeah, I heard a bunch of it. It was weird. It was very... That was an odd glitch. I think we're being watched, dude. Discord we're being watched. and U.S. West. Yeah, I know. NSA. We're being watched. That's what it is. Always watching. Um, all right, the here's... Company. Let's try this story. <laughs> Maybe that was the Red Vines company. <laughs> it might have been. Uh, when someone broke into his house but didn't take anything. Oh, no, wait. I'm sorry. Someone broke into a guy's house but didn't take anything. <laughs> they just Spoiler. cleaned it. Oh, nice. Imagine that. Oh. You go. You come home. You're like, ah, someone broke in the house. And you go in there expecting everything to be ransacked and destroyed and taken and stolen. Nope. Everything is crystal clean, wiped down. Uh, perfectly whatever. This makes me think it's like a family member or something like that. Mother burglar. Mother burglar. <laughs> the mom burglar. <laughs> yeah. She wore like a mask and ski mask and everything. Nate right. Roman came home from work on May 15th. He couldn't tell, that, or he could tell that a stranger had been in his house. Roman, age 44, lives in a single family home on a typical suburban tree line street in Marlboro. It's the cigarette street, I guess. Mm-hmm. Uh, he said it's possible he forgot to lock his back door uh, because whoever entered the house didn't break anything to gain entry. Here's the strange part. Whoever ventured into his home didn't take anything. They just thoroughly cleaned the house. He looked around and saw that they neatly wow. made the beds, vacuumed the rugs, scrubbed the toilets. They even uh, crafted ornate origami roses on the toilet paper rolls in his bathroom. <laughs> do you know the kind where they take the yes, end and do yeah, the thing? I hate that because you have to, like... You're, when you need toilet paper, you're in a situation where you don't want to un, un origami the toilet paper. Right. This is all true. Um, let's see. And every house in his uh, or every room in his house was clean, except for the kitchen for some reason. We don't know why that was. Hmm. He thought, he thought the whole thing was weird and creepy and reported the incident to police. The police department sent Sergeant Daniel Campbell. I uh, said the department hadn't heard of any other situations like this one. We have not received any reports similar to this one in any locations, and we have no suspects at this time. Uh, he says he still doesn't know who did it. The best theory he can come up with is that the housekeeping service mistakenly went to the wrong address and showed up at his house. That's probably yeah, that, that could happen. That happened here. Remember that time? The lady, oh, yeah, right. Lady came to my door, yeah, I think, while maybe even while I was trying to get TMS going. While you were doing the show, yeah. Uh -huh. And she was like, we are cleaning. I, we are here to clean. I clean. Yeah, I clean, I clean. <laughs> It's like, no, those are not my McMuffins. But it would have to be a hotel made service because that's why they didn't know what the heck to do in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. No, that's a good point. Right? It's, it's, it's a, <laughs> what are these strange devices? How do we clean these out? Oh, yeah. No kidding. We're only familiar with places with beds and toilets. I would always think that this is like a family member, like somebody's mother's doing this, or yeah. it, was, it was like a sneaky little. Yeah. Until I mean, but if the kitchen wasn't touched, mm -hmm. and and I would think that the mom would own up to it and probably say, "I came over and cleaned because your house is a mess and it's embarrassing, <laughs> and you're never gonna find a wife, and I'm never gonna have grandkids until you clean that house." Uh, you're the lady from Fifth Element again. I hate her. <laughs> How come you never clean your house, oh, Corbin? I hate What her. an ungrateful monster you turned out to be i hate him so much i hate everything about that subplot i'm saul rosenberg as a woman why did it never bothered me until this viewing I and mean, it's not that it never bothered yeah. me i'm sure it did but this time it got under my skin i hate it you know why because we are our our, our, uh, our hatred used to focus on ruby rod until this viewing and once we kind of accepted ruby rod mm -hmm. we saw that the real villain isn't finger the real vi villain isn't zorg the real villain is uh, Corbin's mom. Yeah. Because she's so unnecessary to the plot. 100%. She, All she does is provide exposition about him winning the prize for Flossed in Paradise. Yeah. 
She's the she's the Jar Jar Binks of this movie. She is. Yeah. She Every, totally is. Everyone thinks it's Ruby Rod. It's not. It's her. Mm-mm. Yep. Ruby Rod grew on me this time. It was an odd totally. feeling because I've seen this movie a billion times and yeah, yeah. Like I said it was the first DVD I ever owned and all that stuff and for some reason everybody's I still love it but Ruby Can you Rod. Please make it sound like you have more than a two word vocabulary. <laughs> 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 I love when he did that. Let's see, I have him doing that here, don't I? Where did I do I that? Think so. Ah! No, no. I don't feel right. I don't feel right, Kobe. No. <laughs> no, I can't. <laughs> you do have a lot of Ruby Rod clips. Though. I thought he had him doing it. No, I can't. Maybe I didn't. I thought I got him going. Zzz, zzz. Which I cracked me up. Yeah, I think you just did that when it was my turn to give my uh, my intro. That must have been it. All right, we're going to take a break. When we come back, Stephen H. Schleicher III will be here for major spoilers. We're going to talk about a couple of nerd things. I don't think Shrek Nerd's here today because holidays, he just leaves. Uh, let me see. Did he answer me? He says, correct. Yeah, he's gone. Okay. Uh, but we'll talk about that uh, that uh, Picard teaser with Stephen, Picard? I think. so. Yeah, sure. Because it looked real good to me. Uh, anyway, we're going to do all that, but in a minute. That's not going to happen until we do some music. So, Brian, bring the music. Yeah, so um, a few months ago, uh, actually last year, I played a co- or, uh, uh, an ending in the middle by this guy named Lee Dongju, uh, D-O-N-G-J-U. He is a South Korean instrumentalist, uh, electronic uh, and guitar combo uh, with some Oriental kind of approach, uh, South Korean traditional music. This is so cool. And um, he has a brand new album called Essence. This is one of those things where you just listen to the whole thing all the way through. Um, but man, you need background music. You need just some kind of cool cool stuff to kind of listen to while you're getting work done or, or um, uh, you know, playing a video game or something like that. You just want some music in the background. This is your thing right here. Uh, this is the song Essence. Uh, it's the title track from Lion's Den to Essence by Lee Dongju, D-O-N-G-J-U, Essence. All right, we'll be right back. If you kill me, copy, you'll never know who murdered your wife. You. You. Nobody but you. The word is they found her in an alley. That's no place for my wife to die in, an alley. It's like living with Dwarf the Klingon. And we're back. By the way, that was... Uh, here, let me play that again. Like with, what, let me play that again. It's like living with Worf the Klingon. Yeah, that's Chris Metzen describing what it was like to live with him when he was uh, going oh, through really? his divorce. Yeah. Okay. He was in the middle wow. of his divorce. Things were rough. Mm. And uh, if you, you were around him or worked near him, you might confuse him with Worf the... Or no, effing Worf the Klingon. That's what he said. Gotcha. Uh, hey, we're back, everybody. Let's get Schleicher up in it. We're still, yeah, we're Slack with him. No, we're uh, Skype with him. We're uh, Skype with him, yep. Yep. I always forget what we're doing with him. Let's see. Here he is. We're calling him. Yeah, that's the sound it made. Oh my gosh, he picked up before it even rang. Steven. It's Steven Schleicher, all the way from Hayes, Kansas. Steven, what's up? Uh, not a whole lot. It's uh, Memorial Day. Yeah, it is. Hold on one second. Yeah. I got to ask Brian a question. What cat was that? Is that the new cat? That's no. That's the the old cat. <laughs> oh, it looked it's darker the in the old shot. Cat. There she is. Hi, Nora. Yeah. Oh. Hi. I'm blocking his screen so he can only see the top third of the Google spreadsheet. <laughs> exactly. Hey, so what does a Schleicher do on Memorial Day? What's your What's your thing? Uh, let's see. We updated a website. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, doing TMS. Yeah. Then Comic Dorks. Yeah. Then I've got to go do Munchkin Land tonight. Then yeah. I'm taking the family out to lunch around to one. Yeah. Uh, that's about it. Okay, so you're working so like the rest day. of us. It's sure. a work day. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. These guys that, you know, go work for themselves are kind of jerks about, like, time. Yeah, yeah we're not good yeah, about I'm that way all the, all the time. Weekends, same way. <laughs> I'm kind of that way on weekends, too. I got to change that. I feel like I need it. I feel like I need to carve out a chunk of weekend where I don't have any commitments. Where you just enjoy the things you want to do. And yeah, but then feel... I feel guilty. I do, too, but I need it. I think yeah. I, my body needs it. I'm tired. 
I'm You'll pooped. get used to it. You know what? You got used to the discipline of working from home, working for yourself, and and uh, and and not, you know, oh, I'll just take care of this right here since I'm at home. You just need to kind of run that back a couple steps yes. and uh, allow yourself some time. Seems like it would be a healthy mental exercise to do that. For sure. Uh, Stephen, it's good to have you here as always. Majorspoilers.com, one of the world's yeah. favorite places to go for pop culture news and information. And... Uh, let's talk first about this Sonic movie getting delayed. I actually made a comic oh, yeah. about it. Did because you guys talk about it last week? Uh, I don't think we. I mean, we may have mentioned it. We've talked about the. Maybe. We've talked about how horrible the character design was. But here's right. the here's the irony. Um, we'll get to the actual details of the story in a second. But there, it's something I actually noticed from actual people, and then I made a comic about it because I heard people do this. The same people were freaking out about the horrible design and telling me how ugly it was. And then it came out that they were going to delay the movie so they could rework the character to be more consistent with what fans wanted. And then the yeah. same person I talked to is mad that the uh, studio is making them start over and that this is not cool for whoever's artistic vision is they're messing with. Like, you can't have it both ways there, Jackson. I, here's the thing. I actually kind of agree. I, I think this sets a very dangerous precedent. It, it does, in, yes. Yeah, in that that all you have to do is raise a big stink as a as the crowd, as the angry fan group, and the uh, the producers of the studio will go back and fix things. Because how much of this did we hear a couple weeks ago or last week with the whole Game of Thrones thing? I yeah, don't want or, this precedent or Star to be Wars or whatever. It, it really or is a Star dangerous Wars, precedent exactly. on. Yeah. And I think Ch Chuck Wendig, I, I talked about this on Finally Friday, but he had a great tweet uh, stream about how. Uh, an artist creates art and he, the artist should be able to create whatever the artist wants to create without outside influence, without people demanding him what he makes. Right. Mm -hmm. But the minute that the artist release what he releases, what he does, whether it be a, a, an extra life cartoon or whatever that you've put up, Scott, mm -hmm. then suddenly <laughs> you have no control over that product anymore. It's suddenly in the hands of the fans or the patrons or the consumers, and they are free to critique and do whatever they want to it afterwards but we are in this uh, dangerous slippery slope where people are starting to say well do i create content with the fan in mind or do i create because i want to create right yeah and my my thing is and the reason the comic came about it was a good one is the exact same people <laughs> were, mm -hmm. yeah, were saying right. the two sides it's like guys okay you're the ones that threw the stink and now you're mad that they're going to change their vision i guess it's okay to have whatever damn opinion you want but i don't know why i have them on my twitter feed so probably not, i need to unfollow those people <laughs> but uh anyway it they are going to go back to the drawing board my main concern is I, i'm kind of like okay well that's weird but i guess fine whatever uh make sure you know th what i want to make sure happens and i don't know if there's even a way to do it but i want to make sure all the artists involved with original stuff uh, that worked on the team and that will be redoing it, that they get properly compensated. I, I'm sure they have been already because when you're working with an effects house, they're getting paid per project and they've already completed the project. They've already turned in the bill. Now it's up for the studio to say, hey, we want changes. And so now the changes are being made and they'll be charged for that. Right. Uh, I know this is only a three month delay from the original release. And I think people are thinking that the movie is being reshot and that you know, all of the Sonic stuff is being rebuilt from the ground up. They've already got the voices. They've already got the, the any kind of motion capture and facial capture that they're doing. They've already got the lighting set up for all the, you know, for the, all the CG stuff. Right, all they really right. need to do is rebuild the model, drop it back into with the skeletal structure of the one that they've already got. And just re-render everything out and then drop it into compositing. I know I'm being very simplistic it on this. It seems like, no, but I mean, it's exactly what it seems like all it should be. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then you've got like... some compositors that'll go in and just should double check some layers, make sure everything lines up. So it should just be, we're spending three months rendering. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I kind of agree. And look, I don't, <clears throat> I mean, at this point, they've made the decision, so they're going to do it. Mm -hmm. And I think you're right. Like, we're just talking about, well, it depends on what yeah, how drastic this re- design is like if it's oh i'm gonna bet it's gonna be really drastic it probably will look like the character from the video game is my thinking mm -hmm. bigger head yeah. giant eyes the tails in the back it's not gonna look like a 12 year old in a freaking onesie <laughs> <laughs> with scary <laughs> stitch teeth yeah <laughs> yeah because it's really jacked up uh looking as it is um but i wonder like in the end all of this will probably contribute to higher ticket sales because everyone's oh, now yeah, curious yeah, yeah. right everybody wants to see what's going on and which know. makes me wonder if this wasn't pre-planned ahead of time if somebody at paramount had given the go-ahead to do this and then months later they saw it and they're like oh crap this looks horrible 
what can we do to turn this around? Let's create this media campaign or let's create this campaign around the ugly Sonic. Mm -hmm. All the while, they've already made the decision to change this long before uh, the the public had their outcry. Right. It just it gets such a great amount of publicity. It, it would be a brilliant move if that's the case. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It'd be great though if there's a malicious animator uh, who's so fed up with the whole fan you know crowdsourcing petitions and stuff like that who replaces the sonic character with like this really crappy rough car uh uh crayon drawing of, <laughs> of sonic that walks through, that basically is in the whole movie like just, whoa, 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 yeah whoa. oh yeah let's bring in an 8-bit 8-bit graphic version of sonic right exactly it's yeah. such an odd it's such an odd <laughs> meme uh meme generator that the the thing brian's describing like weird gangly sonic strangeness is everywhere and it's yeah. i don't understand why before this even before this controversy you could go to tumblr pages and it was just 300 animated gifs of the oddest strangest looking sonic right. the hedgehogs doing weird things like where did that mm -hmm. even come from i don't understand its yeah. origins it's very odd um but it's it's kind of ironic that the movie's in this mess now given that it's had that weird history um, the chat room keeps, uh, i said something to the effect, if you're a movie producer and you want your movie to, to succeed, if you ignore feedback, you're not doing a good job. And I would, I could not disagree with that more. Um, there are countless examples of 20th Century Fox leaning on George Lucas to do something and uh, we would have probably not had Star Wars. Another example mm -hmm. in here is if studios listened to feedback, we wouldn't have gotten Heath Ledger's Joker. Everybody was so up in arms about Heath Ledger mm -hmm. and his role, which leads nicely into our next story. But uh, you know, everybody was sure that was a huge mistake. If you listen to people talking about the news before it happened, we would have never gotten that incredible performance and really a better legacy for him than he would have had had they not used him. So I, I just I cannot disagree more. I think artistic vision matters. Um, but when you're talking about a Sonic movie, you're already piecing it together with bubble gum and tape. You know what I mean? Like it's not, there's no depth here. It's Sonic the freaking hedgehog. It's an answer to well, Mario. It's just it was Sega's way of going. Ah, look, our guy, our little man is fast. Not like Mario. He's slow and lame. Sega, you know? right? So, but on the other hand, on the other side of that, they do have test screenings of movies all the time, uh, where they'll have the test screening audience come in, watch the movie that they have, and then the audience will go, "Well, I didn't like this part, or this part wasn't clear, or this wasn't understanding." Uh, and so sometimes that requires them to go back and do a reshoot. Sometimes that requires them to go back and re-edit some things. Sometimes it requires them to remove entire scenes altogether. So for, I don't know, probably since the the mid-60s when they started doing test audiences, uh, movies have always kind of been a by-the-committee kind of process, mm -hmm. uh, which is a lot different than maybe an indie creator like a Kevin Smith or a Quentin Tarantino in their early days where they did have this autonomous control to do whatever they wanted to do. But once you get past a threshold and you're dealing with, you know, 50, 60, 100, 200 million dollars, then yeah, it does really kind of come down to a committee mm -hmm. process. Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, whatever. Design by committee is a way to do things, but yeah. doesn't always I'll mean it's going to be good. Too, too often you end up with beige. Yeah, I'm going to go on the record to say it sucks. So there. Yeah. Yeah, I've been I've been in those situations, and I know Scott, with you being an artist, have been in those situations at your previous uh, work life, and I'm sure Brian, with your web design stuff, have always mm. been in that and going, but this is the right way. And then by the time it's done, you got spinning gifts and and, uh, and Jesus noises right, all over exactly. the place. <laughs> yes. Yeah, no, you if you compromise your vision, fine, but just know that you are, you know, like you, uh, like if uh, people, if someone in the chat says, hey, these movies. You know, they get test screened all the time and then change endings based on audience responses. No, I'm not saying that doesn't happen. I'm saying, mm -hmm. did it really make it any better? Like, did we get much better out of it because uh, Butterfly Effect had four endings or whatever? Like, did the one they used, was right. that the best one? I don't know. It's right. arguable that the one they threw away was the best one. So... When you allow for creative control, you end up with folks like Bob Dylan and Prince. When you uh, require design by committee, you end up with Kelly Clarkson and Ruben Studdard. Right. And she's a great singer, but she is. But she's she is. A, but she's she's controlled by everything but her. Well, I shouldn't say that. She may be a full yeah, control maybe, of her maybe career. Maybe she's but, not the best. Uh, Clay Aiken. We'll say Clay Aiken. Okay, Clay or, Aiken. Uh, that works. We'll <laughs> right. So, uh, exactly. I, yes, I don't. I mean, Sidian says yes. Studios using test screenings on the whole massively improve the end product. I don't know. I don't know where you get that. I, I, I that's possible. It's possible. I'm dead wrong on that. But I don't know that any of the by committee or by test screening solutions have ever done that much. 
to improve anything. I think stick to your guns and go for it. And maybe that, you know, look, the Sonic guy or whoever's in charge here, like, it's pretty hard to, it's pretty hard not to say how ugly that thing is. Mm -hmm. But maybe if you just stuck with it, it, you know, we would have all been surprised in the end. I don't know. Or maybe this thing's garbage from the beginning and it won't matter because it's kind of an empty headed dumb thing anyway. Like Sonic the Hedgehog is kind of empty headed. It's kind of nothing there. It's, it's, there's not a lot I, of meaning I wonder, to it. I, I wonder, you know, everybody had such really high hopes for Detective Pikachu because the, the renderings and the art and mm -hmm. just the whole CG stuff just looked, looked brilliant beautiful. and wonderful. Yeah. And all of this yeah. controversy about Sonic occurred before that movie released. And now, from what I hear, Brian, I think you went to see the movie. There's not much of a story in the Detective no. Pikachu stuff. No, the the movie is uh, way more of a Where's Waldo game of looking in the background and saying, oh, look, there's an Apom or there's a... There's a Blinkasar, you know, I'm kind of making up names. So here, I but. wonder if the I wonder if the pre-hype of Detective Pikachu had Paramount nervous because they're like, oh man, we need to be doing Detective Pikachu numbers. And now two weeks later, maybe they're thinking, well, maybe it's not such a big deal after all. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, I'm hearing the same thing about Aladdin too, that basically nobody should go see it and it should just be avoided at all costs. <clears throat> Movie draft. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. That you should just basically <laughs> not, not bother with uh, ticket sales and maybe just go see Endgame again. Yeah, I don't know, get... $110 million over the weekend. I know, it did really <laughs> well, which bums me out. Just for, yeah. our, but, uh, for our own selfish version <laughs> reasons. Right, exactly. I'm yes. glad that it's doing better than people thought because I actually kind of like this stuff. I, I don't have a problem with Disney doing this. I'm looking forward to Lion King the most. I think that looks like it's perfect for this sort of treatment. Um, yeah. As bad as those trailers for Aladdin looked, apparently it's not nearly as bad as those trailers would have thought. There's still mixed reviews, but, you know, Tom Merritt, who's pretty, you know, pretty straight up about his reviews, says, yeah, I saw it and it wasn't as bad as everyone thought. And he says, yeah. Will Smith, everyone's worried about Will Smith. He says, this is the best part of the movie. He's really good in it. Hmm. So, you know, withhold your judgment, folks, until you sit down and watch yeah. the damn thing. Yeah. 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 Uh, tell it. So, okay. So that leads us to the other thing. The Pat big controversy, Pat the big Batman controversy. Yes, Pattinson. Everyone's sure this is going to suck, and it's a terrible so, idea. Okay, so that that may be a thing. And again, we talked we've talked about this a couple of times that people are really upset about Pattinson because the only frame of reference that they have him for is the Twilight, Twilight movies, yeah. right? Smart and maybe the Empire, Cedric yeah. uh, Cedric Diggory from uh, from uh, Harry Potter. Yeah, he's but, done a bunch of other stuff, but nobody's seen it, I guess. But let's just yeah. say that we, uh, that uh, Robert Pattinson had been in a movie that just won a major award at the Cannes Film Festival mm. as an actor, would that suddenly change your mind? Because there is a the movie yes, that <laughs> has won the award is called The Lighthouse. It's got Willem Dafoe and Robert Pattinson together as this couple of lighthouse keepers. And if this is the story that I'm thinking of, this is an incredible story because if it's the one I'm thinking of, the ship is like, how come the lighthouse isn't uh, responding to our signals? Let's mm. send some people out there and they get there and there's no sign of anyone on the island. And it was supposed to be these two lighthouse keepers. And then as they try to piece the story together, it may have turned into a murder-suicide mm -hmm. as these two torment each other throughout the entire story. And if that's what this movie is, this could be really good. And of course, it's the director who won this, but the director wins awards not only for the choices in editing and the choices of camera shots, but also how well they're able to direct the actors. And if the actors are doing that good of a performance to get the director an award, then Robert Pattinson may be this uh, this Dark Knight horse that people uh, that people want. Dark Knight uh, horse. I see what you did there with Dark yes, Knight horse. Robert. Yeah, because you could have just said Dark Horse, but you said Dark Knight horse. I like right. it. Dark Knight in the running. Yeah. Yeah. That was all yeah. Right. So I don't know. I, I I'm very interested now in seeing this movie, The Lighthouse, after it's won this award. It uh, uh, and so I I think people are not giving Pattinson a chance to to play Bruce Wayne slash Batman. Yeah. I mean, in this picture, they both need sandwiches. This is just one thing I wanted to point out. They're very skinny. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but now you have me all excited about the lighthouse. So I'm kind of not even thinking about Batman and it, anymore. And it's done all in black and white. It's done as this moody period piece. Go look at this up. I, I'm pretty sure I heard either a a lore episode or another one of those uh, historical uh, podcasts recently where, within the last year's yeah. reason for me, yeah. where they went into detail about what really happened in this in this story. And I think once you know what the story's about, you people might really be wanting to go see this and to see, you know, how well these actors pull it off. Well, I, I for one, have, 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 since the minute it was announced, have been in the, in the position of, I will, uh, let's wait and see, because it could be good. And I really like mm -hmm. the director working on Batman, so... I don't have, uh, I really don't have that any misgivings about him being in there. No. 
I'm going to totally be open-minded because really all you need to do to play Bruce Wayne is be a kind of an ass, kind of a womanizing playboy millionaire ass. And I, Hmm. that's a different take because I've always thought of Bruce Wayne as just kind of an aloof, uh, you know, playboy. Okay. Sure. Well, all right. Sure. Aloof playboy. That's my aloof playboy ass. Yes. I I only, I only watch him for the articles. Um, anyway. So you wanted to, you wanted to talk about Picard really quick. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The Picard trailer is uh, nifty. Although if you close your eyes and pretend you're just, or no, actually you plug your ears or turn off the sound. It's like you're watching a a special wine commercial for Northern California tourist board or something like that until Picard Picard actually shows up. It's this lovely sort of Mm -hmm. watering the grapes and putting the vintage in the boxes and and all of that. Come to Napa Valley. (laughs) Yeah, I keep expecting that to happen, but it's... uh, it looks. I mean, there's not much to it yet, but it, I'm. I couldn't right. be more excited. I'm so excited about it. I, I wonder from what Picard said, and I'm guessing everyone's already watched the trailer. It came out last week. Mm-hmm. But I'm wondering, mm-hmm. is Picard up for some like war crimes trial? Is that what he's up for? Is that is that kind of the hint? Because it seems like, why did you do this? Why were you insubordinate? Why did you go off off playlist and everything? And it just it feels like maybe he's on trial for something. Can't tell. Okay. Um, the way they show his face at the end is pretty stark. You know, like. Mm-hmm. Here's yeah. his very grumpy face. It's not a happy um, Picard. At the no, end no. But I love the idea that he was a serving admiral in Starfleet and something gnarly happened. I mean, maybe this thing is really, we don't know anything about it, so who knows, but maybe this is him retelling through this yeah. courtroom thing. I think so. so and if they did this right, they could do a whole Rashomon thing, Star Trek Rashomon, and, and uh, really change it how you tell a star trek story i think i'd be into it i, I think i mean i just for the I'm just, last time there were four <laughs> lights i think <laughs> i think the thing is that i'm so just excited that it exists that i'm kind of on this um i have this feeling of i don't even care like it could they could blow this yeah for all i know but i'm just i'm on the other end of the hype train where you know wherever i was with the sonic trailer i'm on the opposite side with this Mm-hmm. But I also know my bias runs deep for Captain Picard and for that era, and so yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Hey, I got hard. a couple of questions for you guys. If you're yeah. up for some questions, yeah, go ahead. Sure. Uh, Brian, have you been up to this? Goes back to the pinball discussion from earlier. Have yeah. you been up to eBay and looked at the pinball machines there? I have not. I've. I, I think a while back I went on Craigslist and I went oh, on right. eBay and stuff like that. I mean, I'd much rather do Craigslist and find somebody local because sure. Hauling... No, so the thing I might suggest then is because I've been looking up in the Facebook marketplace where people sell stuff locally and yeah. I go out as far as Denver and there are pinball machines in Denver that people are willing to sell. Now, some of them need some work, sure. but uh, you could if you're looking for, you know, 70s through the 80s, uh, 90s pinballs, a lot of people are selling yeah, those. Are. There are a now, ton. I, I heard oh, you mention man. the Black yeah. Knight a pinball machine. They've got three yeah. different versions of that pinball machine, the the updated version of that. Uh, I think well, the lowest selling one is like $9,000. In uh, at, at this thing, they actually had the brand new version, yes. which was designed by the same guy. So there's the Black Knight 2000, then there was the original mm-hmm. Black Knight. This new one has like three different versions of just Yes, that's what I'm talking itself. about, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, like yeah, a yeah. limited edition version and an exclusive version, whatever. I didn't get a chance to play the brand new Black Knight, but I saw, again, long line of people waiting to play those, but it looked really, really cool. And then what do you think about doing a digital? You know, you've got a, a MAME cabinet for your, your arcades. Yeah. They also have digital pinball where essentially you're taking a flat screen TV, mm-hmm. you're dropping it down into a pinball case, and then you've got the bumpers and you've got the the plunger and the, uh, the, the, the trigger buttons and everything all act as normal, and then it just runs right through onto the video side which means you can load up a bunch of different any, pinball any machines want. on there yeah i'm all in on that i know it's i know it feels like blasphemy but i don't care i i would rather do that than have to have the thing break every 10 minutes and adjust the damn thing and yeah and i've played one of those and and uh it just doesn't obviously it doesn't feel the same i mean even if you've got the physics just perfectly down it just feels i want i want analog um i know this <laughs> it's totally fine for some people and totally totally cool with that but i definitely want um i guess uh, let me put it this way i want analog but i'll take this if i if i if it's if the cost is ridiculous and over the top when it comes to maintenance on the analog stuff yeah. i'd probably be yeah. okay here in the same way that i'm okay with you know our, uh, an old cart uh, old arcade cabinet but with a led led mm-hmm. screen in there i don't care it doesn't have to oh, be man. a crt i don't want to there's deal a with that. there's a there's a uh sit down racer arcade machine 
that somebody's taking out of an old arcade in a town near me. I'm not going to say because I don't want people jumping on this. But <laughs> everything is original except for the screen, which he's replaced with an LED screen. But he's selling it for $500. Mm. Huh. And it's and it's wow, like a, that's a great... late, late 80s, early 90s thing that's, that's a great in great deal, shape. Too. And I'm just like, ah, oh, if I only had the money, I would go buy this like right now. But mm. it's still up for sale. And so... How much? Uh, it is. I'm. It, he's got it listed for seven fifty, but it's been up there for a month now, and I know he would take five hundred if I if I offered it for him. Dude, you might. I yeah. mean, I'm not saying you should, but maybe you should. That's what I'm saying. I know. I know. Right? <laughs> I wonder how a VR uh, pinball, like you know, basically having VR glasses on playing pinball. I wonder. If oh, to give you some more three D depth. Right. No, there's a whole bunch yeah. of those somewhere. Are Somebody's on the, on the Oculus. Uh, side I don't know if it's on the Quest or not, or if it's even a thing that you can get outside of just some hackery PC way. But there's some, there's something out there that was it. Oh, the chat even brought it up. Jeremy on tested uh, tested .com did a VR pinball thing that had physical buttons. So he set up this stand so. In the real world, outside of the headset, you would just see <clears throat> like a wooden apparatus that was the same height as a pinball machine, and it had oh. buttons on the side, mm -hmm. and for the flippers, and also a pull thing for the ball. And in the game, it was mapped to the game. So while you were in it and in the virtual world, you're looking at this big, cool pinball machine, and when you touch the side of this thing, you are touching its buttons, and its flippers are responding. And when you pull that physical knob back, it's sending the ball out. Just like it would in real life. Oh, there it is. Jane, See, Jane Lasko put cool. it in the chat. That's totally cool. Yeah, you should watch that video, Brian. I think it's, okay. I mean, it's a very, it's a little bit of a hack, obviously. Yeah, but, but at least you're getting the combo because you want that, you want that, uh, that feel that, um, you know, the actual physical flipper button feel. Yeah. And, yeah. and that's what a lot of these uh, digital pinball bowl machines have is they have the actual flippers and plungers and everything oh, that you can you. have without being, you know, putting on a virtual sure. set. It's just like flat screen TV. You've seen the, the um, digital pinball games on your ps4 and other places just like mm -hmm. that but with the real flippers and everything this gives you the, no. the exact build and everything like how to make it and everything like step by now, step now one of the things that we were talking about when i was talking to um rusty and and shelly at the expo is having a pinball machine where it's a combination of the two so it is a physical uh a physical table but underneath that physical table is an led or, or you know is a screen a big giant screen that can kind of change the um, uh, the the things you're hitting. Like so, the targets will always be in the same place. The spinner, oh, right, the rain, right. all that stuff yeah. will always oh, be in the same yeah, place. Oh, they're always physical. You're saying there's physical stuff in there. It's just that the the floor changes. The floor changes. Right. So basically, okay. you know, it's it's now themed as Avengers and the the little arrows that are pointing to things that you need to hit or what you need to hit uh, now are Ultron themed or they're you know Thanos or whatever. Um, that I think is a brilliant concept, and that way, you know, you're still hitting the same targets, but you're hitting maybe there's different uh, an order that you've got to hit it for this game, or you've got to get this target specifically for this other game, even though the targets are in the same place. It's almost I like a like a it's cool. almost like skinning your game. You could put skins. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. I like that idea a lot. That's pretty cool. Cool, Scott. Question for you. Yeah. And you're talking about your dad in the arcade. Maybe I've asked this before. Maybe. Did he see the Did he see the uh, the home arcade stuff coming and was there at any point you know if he thought about opening up like a GameStop-esque store where he would sell you know Nintendos and Ataris and arcade cartridges and that stuff well the one downfall of his exploits during that time were he was doing really well and we had just in 1984 just bought a brand new warehouse mm. and uh, basically assembly place and he had a, all these new employees we had a direct uh, connection with like um, Data East and a couple of Japanese uh, developer publishers that were sending us boards. So we were like just ramping up to go next phase like big with this thing. Mm -hmm. And in 1985, arcades crashed. The bottom dropped out. The bottom yeah. just dropped. Well, it's more like it was actually kind of writing was on the wall, 83 through 85. But really, 85 is when everything took a big giant dump. And um, arcades in particular is what I mean. Nintendo, that also happened to be the, the year Nintendo released the Nintendo Entertainment System. And that did not help the arcade world. So his problem was he was fully invested All right. okay. on this side. And so when that happened, it just tanked everything. And he had to he had basically lost the business as a result. Mm -hmm. Had He was ahead of, his, ahead of his time in lots of ways. We had the very first 
It was a game called Zor. It was a Data East game. But we had the very first arcade cabinet in history, the best we could tell, that had stereo sound. Like oh, that cool. didn't, didn't exist before. So you had actual stereo sound coming out of there instead of just some monochrome speaker up in the top of the cabinet. That was a big deal. The game wasn't great. It was kind of lame, but the sound was really cool. And then the other thing that was a big deal was he had sketched out, he had the sketchbook full of drawings of a sit-down, enclosed, like, fighter pilot-style arcade cabinet that when you played it, it would rock and move depending on what you did. And he did this years before Afterburner or any of that Sega stuff that came out that all had, like, those roll cages in it. Like, he was ahead of his time on ideas kind of terrible at the execution or at least the timing mm. of the execution so mm-hmm. things kind of kind of pooped out but had he i think had he seen that stuff coming more clearly and more early he may have shifted gears as to what his plans would have been yeah but yeah i was, I was always curious because it was like well if you know it seemed like it came as a surprise but i didn't know if he had seen it early enough to even contemplate opening up a, a game store no i think it was like a momentum thing you know like i think he could have would have mm-hmm. um but he was so so invested and there was so much momentum behind like we now own this warehouse we now have these bunch of employees like this is the direction we're going come hell or high water mm-hmm. that the the hell and high water came <laughs> and uh <laughs> slowed everything down and killed it so yeah, yeah, yeah it's kind of a bummer i was only you know in this range i was something like between 13 and 15 during this phase and um through all of it i was Kind of, I was done. You know, I didn't know any better. I wish I had my brain now, like what I know now. Oh yeah, we, we'd have, we'd have totally refocused and gone a different direction. There's no question about it. But still, the saddest thing that ever happened about any of this was that he put 350 unused cabinets, brand new cabinets, with controls and everything, all set to go. CRTs in them as well. Put mm. them all in a warehouse, or put them all in a um, storage unit. And then after he passed away, he didn't tell anybody we had the storage unit. And they stopped getting payments, and my mom didn't know about it, so she wasn't paying it. And then they just auctioned off all these cabinets, and I was so wow. sad. Because just think what we could have done with those. We could have just maimed them yeah. out, sold them, mm-hmm. painted a bunch of them, done some like custom art ones. Like I could have gone bananas. And the CRTs yeah. alone, because people want like legit mm-hmm. CRTs now. Yeah, they'd be right. worth so much money right now. Ah. It gives it's me heartbreaking. Yeah, it gives me yeah. gas. I have gas right now because of it. I have gas. Well, now you've got, you need to design. <laughs> you need to design custom artwork for people who are doing their main. Yeah, main that's, that's true. I am still whether it kills me or not. I'm still going to do a full size. <laughs> full well, size Steve, sure, sure. Yeah. It's your it's your Chinese democracy. It'll happen. Well, or, you know, this, the, like the one that Brian built. Forever. You know, mm-hmm. Do the original art. Sell that stuff. Charge people for that. Yeah, uh, I, people will buy it. I wanted to kickstart like small. Not the tiny, tiny ones like Brian has. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, I have to ask you about that. Did you ever ship that one? You ever send me that little oh, one? No, I've got it over here, sitting next to me. It's all right. Don't do, only do it when you have an excuse, like you have other things to send or something. But <laughs> anyway, uh, I want to do like something in the middle range, like about this big, but have it be accurate size, but big enough joysticks and balls and stuff so it doesn't feel like they're tiny. Mm-hmm. And I want to kickstart that, and I want to do custom art on the side, and I'll make space murder cabinets and like these you know fake arcade machines that never existed because we're not going to get any licenses or anything and just put a raspberry pi and a freaking sd card slot in there and sell them i would do oh i want that to be our business i would do that in a heartbeat that would be so cool tms just becomes a place to shill it that'll be it (laughs) anyway uh this has all been well and good steven it's been fun hanging out with you man all right we'll hang out again in about a half hour yeah comic dorks don't uh (laughs) don't forget everybody head on over to uh steven's website majorspoilers.com it's not only just a bunch of great content and posts about comics and everything pop culture but there's tons of podcasts yep some of it like og the ice as far as i'm concerned the og D &D podcast ever (laughs) Mm-hmm. Yeah, not not the original one, but definitely one of the uh, one of the early ones. One of the yeah. first OGD ever. ND. Yeah, there you go. Yep. And uh, it's all good. So do check that out. Major spoilers on Twitter. Stephen, have a fantastic day. Stay hydrated. Bye now. <laughs> all right. Awesome. You know, all this time later, Skype still doesn't um, have a way to mute sound. Isn't that dumb? Oh, that is. Yeah. Boo-doo. We're talking like a year since this happened. Oh, Skype. Yeah, you they just can... broke everything, and you don't seem to show any signs of wanting to fix it. No. Is it because they're focused on their new business version of Skype, you think? I th- have a feeling it must be. I mean, I don't know what else would be. Like, they yeah. literally have an option in here under notifications to turn them off 
It just right. doesn't do it anything. Does, does nothing. Yeah. Oh, I have an app I should tell you about. What is uh, it? What's it called? It is Sound Source. You can mute individual programs. Um, and it's made by the um, wait, the, it? not the Audio Hijack guys. Oh, I was gonna say, is it that because they have a thing that's similar to uh, Wire Wire? It, what was that? It's Ro- yeah, it is. It's Rogue Amoeba. Yeah, and it's called uh, Sound Source. All of a sudden, I'm hearing a weird echo. Is that me doing that? Uh, I don't know. Might be. Oh. What are you doing? Weird. All right. I'm going to turn this off, and then I'm going to turn it back on. Okay. Way better now. All right. Um, yeah, Sound Source allows you to mute or redirect the sound from individual um, apps. Oh, there it is. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Oh, that I looks, used this I, it, loopback to do all the things I had to do with physical cables on my iMac to do coverville streaming with twitch and and all that on the single machine i ought to look at both of these yeah i still haven't installed i have loop back but i haven't installed it it's great yeah. it, I'm, I'm yeah i've uh i love it now i love it scott I do love you it. love it brian do you love it i do i do love it scott. great well then love yeah. this i'm gonna, I'm gonna read an email ron from seattle do. he wrote in says uh, hi i'm ron from seattle and he's speaking of polish jokes he says, Scott, I used to work with a bunch of Ukrainians, and I explained that in the 80s, we told Polish jokes. They informed me in Ukraine that everyone makes fun of Moldova. I asked for an example, and they gave me this gem. A group of guys sitting around a bar after work, and a Ukrainian guy loudly says, Hey, why can't Moldovians eat pickles from the jar? Because their heads don't fit in it. And at this point, a male Moldovian stands up, all offended, and says, Why is it so funny? Your head all, does not fit in either. <laughs> Ron in Seattle. So there you go. It's That's the Mol- awesome. it's the so Moldovians. That Moldavians. Do- Moldavians are the Polish, uh, the Polacks of the Ukrainian world. There you go. <laughs> Everybody's got their own version of a Polak joke. It's just not always Polish people. And I still don't yeah. really understand why Polish people were the target for us. But, but I don't either. Yeah. I think it's because they let they let um, I shouldn't they'd say let's is more complicated than that. But they basically let Hitler in. Like they just kind of let him waltz in and, you know, cleanse the joint. And it just seems like a dumb thing to let somebody do. I think that's where it came from. Pure speculation on my part. I have no idea. I could yeah, probably look it up. I'm lazy today. I'm not doing it. <laughs> All right. Mashup we'll time. Just it for, for the future, it'll be angry bloggers. Hey, how many angry bloggers does it take to <laughs> fit? Exactly. How do you get an angry blogger to change a light bulb? <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. All right, I'm going to play a mashup. This is from Jamie over there at TMS Mashups, patreon.com slash TMS Mashups as well, if you want to help that guy out. He sent this one in. It is the Monday mashup, and he calls it Rehab Shark. Okay? Okay. Reha- I don't remember this at all, so we'll see what this says. Here we go. Are you prepared to receive <laughs> my limp, limp, penis, penis, penis? <laughs> Slowly flapping bird is my failed Slowly. iOS game. Didn't go well. That was such a bad iOS game. Yeah. <laughs> it just drags along the ground and hits the first barrier. So oh. slowly flapping. It's really hard to do. <laughs> we came alongside him and the driver appeared to have fallen asleep. If they really want to tweak everybody's uh, anger bean, here's what you do. That doesn't sound, that's not good what I just said, is it? <laughs> tweaking the Probably bean. not. Sure. Tweaking the anger bean? Go do the quest where you have to kill 50 people. That sounds good, but maybe first I come in there and we have a sex. <laughs> <laughs> ah, yeah. Yeah. Ooh. Wow. I still pop it out and play with it, though. What? I still other... pop it out and play with it, Yo, though. What? I said it. Whoa, you did say it. Never take it back. I like it when my balls hit to the beat. Balls hitting at the beat. That's right, son. Druggy shark. Do, 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 do. <laughs> shark. Damn it, Jared. Do you not know how the baby shark theme goes? <laughs> He's <laughs> having a hard time finding the rhythm. Let him go. It's funny. I like the baby it. Shark. <laughs> the baby shark. That's so not it at all. Charlotte bon- Bonnet's Bron- Bronte's hair. Who the hell's that? This got a weird tosso, Elaine. I can't date her. I can't date her. I'm it's all wrong with her Oh, look how long it is. Snowballs and Peter Jennings. Coffee for you. Chicken for me. <laughs> Oi, I got me finger up me bum. You got a Brazilian in uh, downtown Vegas. Yeah, I got it the... at the axe throwing uh, place called the Axe Hole. <laughs> and just had them uh, 
I thought it was axe wound. No. Oh, no, it's not an axe wound. Don't say that, jeez. Have an axe hole waxing. Oh, gosh. We were just getting to the point where uh, Brian was going to describe his thing, and then you popped in. Yes. So let's... Um, his we're, thing? Yeah, he's going to describe uh, his thing. Jamie? Hey, Brian, why don't you describe your thing for us? I'm going to describe my movie. How's right. that? Okay. Uh, Rehab shark. Do, 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 do. Pretty close. You're getting there. Right. You're getting closer. <laughs> Keep right. Do, 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 do. No. Do, do. <laughs> Do, 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 baby shark, do, 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 baby shark, do, 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 do. I don't know how it goes. I hate that song. <laughs> I forgot he struggled with that so much. He really. Is... For a while there, he was doing uh, Stevie Wonder's Part Time Lover. That do, 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 do. Oh, yeah. <laughs> He's a part. Oh, now I'm thinking of the wrong song. Part time lover. Oh, yeah, that's right. I was thinking, she's an angry lover. Or no. She, oh, yeah, no, that's Philip Bailey and Phil Collins. Yeah, that's right. I heard that this weekend. Yes. The two Phils. Sure. Yeah. We listened to a lot of Peter Gabriel this Not weekend. No other. Except that was, that was Phil Collins. No, I know, but we, re- we listened to a oh, okay. lot of Peter Gabriel. It just reminded me of it because they both sing Did you? For, okay. Uh, cool. Yeah, they're Genesis. both Genesis. But he, mm-hmm. he, dude, is he the most, like,. <laughs> That guy, I don't care who you are, what age you are, you can enjoy Peter Gabriel, like right now. You can just sure. sit down, and you can listen to his music and go, ah, this is good. Whatever I'm listening to is good. The whole album, so. I mean, again, one of the one of the greatest albums, front to back. Yep. Just one great song right after another. Red Rain and Don't Give Up and Sledgehammer and Big Time. and So good. Ah, so, so good. good. We also listen to a lot of Sheryl Crow for some reason. Sometimes I Really? Get, well, yeah. you know, if it makes you happy. Sometimes. <laughs> Somebody told me she wrote that, uh, wrote or performed that, uh, uh, they say they paved paradise and put in a parking lot song. Do you know the one? She definitely didn't write that. Yeah, it's Joni Mitchell wrote that one. Uh, it's called Big Yellow Taxi. And to my knowledge, Sheryl Crow, I don't know of a cover of that song by Sheryl Crow. Okay, because I kept, somebody kept saying, yeah, she did that. I'm like, no, I don't think she did. I think that's she a different. Didn't do it, she certainly didn't do it originally. She might have done it from something else, but. And there's another band uh, who sings it that more popularly in like the 90s. There's a cover. Counting Crows uh, and uh, Vanessa. Carlton? Carlton, yes. So that's probably it. They're confusing the crow part with the Counting Crows and Cheryl Crow. Right. Oh, that's totally it. Yep. Yes, they're, they're, yes, that's Finally. exactly it. Finally. I don't yeah. usually get resolution on weird shit. This hap- this fix no, is all good now. It's all good. 100% nailed it. Yep. yep. This this case is closed. We can go to the next Law and Order episode and not have to worry about what. Farmer, farmer, put away that DDT now. <laughs> there was always all just, the apples and little birds and the bees. They always like sound that. like they're it's crying, actually. like a bunch of cats. Don't you think? Mister Jones and me. <laughs> this is kind of Don Knotts now. Oh, Andy. The stereo. Andy. <laughs> Wait, look at the television, Andy. <laughs> Andy. <laughs> Andy. <laughs> That's fantastic. Uh, all right. We're going to take our leave. Check this out. You can email us just like that person did, uh, Ron, earlier with his Polish joke thing. You can send us an email, themorningstream at gmail.com. You can support us, and we wish you would, over at patreon.com slash TMS. And as always, uh, uh, frogpants.com slash TMS. will get you everything else you need to know. Uh, uh, that's it. I think we're done. Brian, okay. do you want to play a song? I will play a song. I have to move the cat so I can see the song description. So I'm going to hold the cat as I give the description. Well, you've literally moved Catwoman is what you've done. I've, I've moved Catwoman. Yep. Uh, Sean from Vermont wrote in and said, uh, Greetings, fellow nerds. On Thursday, the 23rd of May, I depart the Green Mountain State and head towards the city of brotherly love to see the Who perform. I'd love to hear a cover of Love, Rain, Over Me, or any other Who tune, as long as it's not performed by any sort of biscuit, limp, or otherwise, to break up the six-hour drive. Keep up the great work, fellas. Uh, signed Sean from Vermont. Now, I apologize, Sean. You've already gone and seen the Who and, and driven back. It's four days later. Hopefully you had a great time and enjoyed the concert. Seeing the Who would be awesome, and they're coming through Denver, and I'd love to go see the Who myself. But regardless, uh, Love Rain Over Me is such a great song, and hearing Roger Daltrey just belt it out is amazing. This version, maybe not as good as the original Who version, but still pretty damn good, uh, especially the fact that it features Joe Elliott from Def Leppard on vocals, along with Rick Wakeman and Hugh Lloyd Langton, Langton mm. uh, as well. 
Um, it comes from a tribute to The Who that came out in 2012 called Who Are You? An all-star tribute to The Who. And uh, here is Joe Elliott and company with their cover of Love, Rain Over Me. This show is part of the Frog Pants Network. Frog Pants Network. Get more shows like this at frogpants.com. I've moved Catwoman. Mm. Mm. Yes. He's really... 